Okay, hi everybody. Welcome to this special live vlog presentation. Why is Christ consciousness the balance of polarity? I thought I would give this a shot at doing it live since having a live audience can also energetically you can feel other people and it's a bit more a bit more lively, but I'll see I'll see how this goes. So before I get started, I know there are some people who don't use Facebook. And I wanted to just mention a little bit of our, our experience, my husband and I, our experience with COVID-19. We got it maybe shortly after Christmas or right after Christmas time, we were probably exposed. There was no one around us that tested positive. We don't know exactly where we got it from. I'm pretty isolated. But I just wanted to say that we received a, a great deal of support from Yeshua and the cosmic realms. And um, we got blasted with a lot of light and uh, information in some sense. And one of the things that uh, Yeshua really encouraged me to do through the process was one, to practice gratitude and, and genuine gratitude, not things like, oh, I should be grateful, I have a, um, a nice house or I have enough food to eat. But, really in the moment of what you feel grateful for. So even looking outside, if I saw a flower, I would really feel the the blessing of that flower and feel grateful for what I was seeing. Um, grateful for even that groceries could be delivered. That was a huge savings for us um, energetically. So the genuine heartfelt gratitude, it allows us to really open the heart and it opens the entire physical body system, you feel more relaxed, you, you can, it's easier to center yourself and stay in a state of calmness. And that gets everything flowing in the body. When we're in that relaxed state, all our body systems can flow and um, really work more in, in balance and really being grateful that the body is intelligent and has a wisdom to know how to process these uh, infections, so to speak. So that one, that part was really helpful. And also, um, Yeshua yeah, encouraged me to not really think about the outside rhetoric about how COVID should go. So, you know, any scripts about, oh, well, these people end up in hospitals and running fear on, you know, what if I end up in the hospital or what if one of my family members ends up in the hospital? Those kinds of scripts can also uh, take you out of the moment and uh, generates more fear in the body. So as many of you know, my husband and I have two developmentally disabled children and that's always been the biggest concern for us with COVID. And thankfully, you know, they didn't get it. Um, so I just wanted to mention that since it's going around and whether you wanna call it COVID or something else or whether you believe it really exists, there is something that has a sort of a common uh, set of symptoms. And what set mine off is definitely the, um, that my taste buds changed. So, you know, we got over it. We, um, you know, none of us, yeah, it didn't, it didn't progress beyond um, feeling achy and it's, it's no fun. Um, but, you know, just keep in mind that most people are recovering from it and that by allowing, um, everything to flow in the body, it helps a lot. So let's get on to this topic of why is Christ consciousness the balance of polarity? And I've talked about this in other videos and some of our blogs, but I wanted to start to break things down a bit more, maybe do shorter videos that are a bit more succinct because I know some of them are really long. And once I get talking, then I can get a little too complex in my language. So my intention is to keep this as short and as concise uh, as possible and deliver the message with some visuals. So with that said, um, let's go to my uh, let me screen share, my iPad, and my, I'll be turning my video off. So. Okay. 
Okay. All right, here we go. So, uh, since I'll be focusing on my video on my iPad, I won't really be able to see comments and things. So, I'm going to start with this straight line. And imagine that this line is what we would call the uh, polarity, right? You think of polarity in this linear way. There's a positive. Um, one second, let's turn that off. Okay, so we think of a positive and sort of a negative, right? Let's say this is the midpoint here, and that's what we call sort of the, the balance point we think of, right? And so in this system of polarity that we have existed in, extreme polarity, we're constantly trying to, to balance. We go from one end to the other end, and then we say, no, that's not right. We went too far in one direction now. We're gonna try and get balance and we try and swing the other way. I mean, this is really how I see even our political parties. You know, we have Democrats on one end, we have Republicans on the other. And we're always trying to find that balancing point, right? So uh, polarity is also this line and also indicates that it's linear. We think of time as going in this direction, past, present, present, and future, everything else to stay in present time. So it's kind of, um, it takes more work to stay in balance when we're operating in this extreme polarity. So those of you familiar with um, Christ consciousness, so to speak, or the, the Trinity, uh, as in, well, the biblically, it's um, we're talking about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, right? And let me just say, it, you know, up front, and I've said it before, that when I say Christ consciousness, I mean it not in any biblical terms and not about any one man. Um, and I'm not, uh, I don't follow, I don't consider myself to be part of any religion at this point. And I believe that there is uh, beautiful truths in all the major religions, uh, but there's also a lot of distortions because we've been trying to interpret things from that extreme polarity. So imagine this triangle as being um, a kind of more of a, a stabilizing uh, force because, you know, with this triangle, we have this third point here. And um, just having this th third point actually balances everything out. So if you imagine even like a stool, uh, you can't have a, a, a stool will not stand up until you have at least three legs, right? It'll teeter totter one end or the other. Now, some people can balance on one, um, but again, imagine the work that it takes and the energy that it takes and the focus of your body to stay in balance. So. The natural balance is this third point, okay? And one of the ways to look at it is that then um, this line here would be what we would call neutrality because now we have engaged all three aspects, which I would say is the mother, the father, and the Christosophia, right, of masculine and feminine. So even, even in our bodies, there's a masculine side, there's a feminine side, and we're uh, trying to, to balance that. We're trying to learn how to come back into balance with those aspects. So since about 2017, 2017 really started the major changes um, to our first, second, and third dimensions. And that's what we mean by being in extreme polarity. When you're operating mainly in the first, second, and third dimensions, we're operating, uh, we've been operating in extreme polarity. And so beginning in 2017, things really started to change. And in 2018, uh, our universal structure really started to change even more. And I'll talk about that in a, another video. So um, 
uh, so th there have been major changes taking place since 2018 to bring back this tri-wave because the tri-wave is a foundational platform for manifestation. So when you're operating in bi-wave, in extreme polarity, that's been the foundation that we have been operating on, right? Some of these other ones. So this is a bi-wave structure because from this perspective as well, it's, this is um, the line, so to speak, of linear thought processes, linear time, uh, and extreme polarity. And extreme polarity in concepts are things like um, worthy and unworthy, superior, inferior, rich and poor. So when you are architecturally, because there is energetic foundation and an energetic architecture before the manifestation and the pre-manifestation state, there is a platform, there's a foundation. And so when you're operating on by wave extreme polarity, it even embeds, it, it is, has even been embedded into our belief systems and how we think. So when I say even that uh, our religions are even, have been, um, let's say, uh, let's say infiltrated with extreme polarity thought patterns, we were continuously reinterpreting the messages from the great masters that came. We continually reinterpreted the messages using a by wave platform and a mental body system. So um, in order to get us out of that by wave system, they have changed the, the cosmos, God, source, uh, star seeds, uh, crystals, beings, uh, like our kids, the autistics of the seven higher heavens, uh, incarnated to bring the triway back, which is the balance of polarity. And that's what the human avatar blueprint is actually based on. It's based on a triway platform. So if you even look at all our institutions, the foundations of what makes up our reality, and this includes our economic systems, our school system, it has all been based on this by wave linear extreme polarity system. And so when you're in it, you continuously recreate things that are really still based on the same platform. And so we're, we've been continuously swinging from one end to the other, so to speak. Now, polarity, so to speak, by itself is not good or bad. Polarity in the sense of positive and negative within the, in the sense of uh, neutrality is um, what holds the atoms together. It's what, uh, it, it, it's, it's what creates our reality at a, at, a, at a foundational level. But as soul beings, it's important that we also are functioning from a higher perspective, so to speak, a higher perspective where we are, um, where we can be in present time, where we can see from a neutral perspective. So let me go back to the other triangles for a moment here. So if we were to imagine this um, triangle, right? Uh, and that we can even, oops, that we can even um, think about 
this point as the point to get gain a higher perspective. So that we're looking at things, so to speak, in higher perspective, meaning like from above the situation of what's happening. Because if you're here trying to maintain balance, you're constantly trying to, um, with your mental body, trying to see it from a different perspective, but it's, it's very difficult. And when we're operating in this state of neutrality, which means in present time, we're in our bodies, we are, we are uh, uh, in a balanced state, and it, takes, and it takes some time and practice, obviously, but we can then navigate what we're seeing much more better. We have better discernment, and we have um, more clarity in what we're seeing. And because the avatar human is based on a triway platform, this means that our soul matrix is also based on this triway platform, which begins, surprise, no surprise, right, in the heart, in that fourth chakra in the heart. And so when we're seeing things from the soul's perspective, and you are operating from a soul state, it's going to become much easier to navigate and evolve out of the 3D matrix, okay? So this is why the triway is the balance of, of polarity. So this is, this is the triway, and this is why we keep seeing uh, the three because it is when we come into true balance. I don't know if this is exactly in front, but it's close enough here. Um, so this is why we keep seeing this uh, Trinity. And again, Trinity as in, not, not biblically as in uh, the Father, the, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, but as in the Father, the Mother, and the Christ Sophia child. And I say Christ Sophia, meaning the masculine and feminine aspect of the crystals, of, of the Christ consciousness in balance. <clears throat> so the other aspect to understand is that, right, we can't create without that feminine and that masculine aspect. And the father. Holy Father accesses into the macrocosm or the very, very big. And but it's it's actually Holy Mother that accesses into the quantum field. And all these sort of um, openings have now opened up. Even Holy Father, let's say the Father Ark is the gateway to, to uh, into the God worlds of the macrocosm. Even the divine masculine has really not operated on the planet. And equally, especially the divine mother has not been uh, accessed. And there's been a lot of reversals in, uh, even with this concept of the feminine. Because think about it, if the mother accesses into the quantum field and you have control over the quantum field, then you really control manifestation on this planet. And this is part of what has been happening on the planet. And this is why it has been so um, challenging to get us out of uh, polarity thinking and polarity systems. Now, um, like I was saying, even our economic systems are, have been based on this by wave system, right? In polarity, if there's a rich, then there's gonna be a poor. There's gonna be winners and there's gonna be losers. There's going to be people that we compare ourselves who we think are better, superior, and that makes us feel um, unworthy or worthless. And one of the things that the kids, the autist collective has even said is that 
this concept of worthy and unworthy doesn't even exist um, from God's source. It's not a concept that God's source made up. I mean, this is, again, extreme polarity because if you know yourself to be a soul and really an expression of God, then what is there to feel worthy or unworthy about, right? There's, there's no, no such concept exists. And, and another point is that, think about this for a moment. If you are an expression of God in this physical body, because this is what we're being called to do, to be the Christos Sophia, that is the third principle. We are the third principle in our bodies as an expression of God brought here to balance polarity. So if you're an expression of God, even the concept of worshiping God does not even exist from that omniversal law of one realm because what is there to worship? You are an expression of God. And this expression of God has been turned around as if it's arrogant to, to think that you are God. And if you're God, then why can't you, you know, create these miracles on X, Y, and Z? And it's important to just let go of that pattern of thinking because it does not even, it does not even serve us because truly God's source is not about this power to control and to, um, be over somebody, to have servants and a master, right? That's even a, um, a polarity or by, by way thinking platform that we are being called to be the expression of God in body, in form. And it's meant to be in the most humble expression to be able to be in this dense physical form all the way down to the first, second, third dimensions, and really the 12 dimensional avatar is a 12, 15 uh, chakra actual being. That's what it was meant to be. That's how it was like, but that's for another time. But uh, the 12 dimensions is where we get our frequency codes to manifest this uh, body, okay? And again, I don't want to get too complex, but um, so, the avatar human operates in all 12 of those dimensions, even the first, second, and third dimensions. And I'll go, I'm planning another um, vlog and I'll talk a little bit more about dimensions in a shorter format as well. So we're meant to be the expression of God in form. And it means that each of us was designed to be unique. So the, the spiritual breath that animated each one of us is let's say, quote, a different breath because it's unique to you and what your soul gifts and soul mission is to be. Now, the other beauty of that knowing is that then the um, concept of even superior and inferior is going to start to fade away. Because if we each know what we are designed to do and we are each unique, then there's no reason to compare yourself to somebody else. And there's no reason to think that you're superior or inferior than anybody else. You know what you're here to do and you have, all you have to do is become the expression, to live the expression of who you came to be and allow the gifts that was um, uh, imprinted into you to manifest and flourish. And again, so then that begins, to, is going to begin to change the education system, right? Because the education system, we've all been trying to uh, raise our kids into certain jobs. You know, oh, they're good at this, so we're going to direct them in this direction, or they're good at that, and direct them in that direction. Gosh, we can't find anything that this kid is good at. So then, what? What you know? What happens? They they are seen as uh, incapable. 
incapacitated, um, they're worthless. And, um, you know, then we have lots of issues with self-esteem and uh, feeling worthless as they grow up and which leads to a whole host of other, well, we've seen it leads to a whole host of other, other problems. So this is the direction that we're moving in. And as you could see, uh, over the last three years, since 2018, again, the architecture and the foundation, the platform has been gradually changing to embed this tri-wave balanced manifestation platform, a foundation to be embedded into the earth because it's pushing us now then to come into balance. And this is what part of what we've been seeing over the last few years and really the breakdown of that 3D platform or right, the bi-wave extreme polarity platform is breaking down. Uh, and we saw you know, much more of that happening in uh, 2020, but now this tri-wave is really, really activating on the planet. Um, and by, it's by the divine grace of God that it's been happening in kind of stages so, so that we're not, because if this happened right away and it changed the platform in the earth, because we are earth material, we have to remember that. If it changed that quickly, we would not be here because our physical bodies would not have been able to handle it. So it's happening, it's been happening gradually and now it's really activating and engaging. There's a whole new electromagnetic grid on the earth and the pre-manifestation template has changed to a tri-wave platform. So there are, like, like I was saying, the uh, extreme polarity thought patterns are gonna break down. Now, so I mentioned just some obvious ones, but there's more that's embedded into our thought patterns and I call them distortions um, from the true balance platform. They're distortions and it's hard to even know how much of those distortions there are. And this is part of the evolutionary process. So we're going to be physically changing because now the gateway to the mother arc, right, all the way through has uh, opened. There is a lot of new, I don't know, quantum bits coming through from the quantum field. And there is, um, uh, a whole host of support from the macrocosm and the microcosm. So even new divas and elemental spirits, those are considered like the microcosmic spiritual uh, beings that it assist in manifestation. So we're receiving a lot of support and this evolutionary process involves, um, requires that it's going to take time and it's, it's happening in stages. So those of us who are already adults in our you know, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s that are, uh, feel all this happening, we're sort of the bridge people and we're adapting physically. New DNA templates are coming in um, and we'll be able to adapt our bodies up to a certain point. Uh, but when we can't take it any further, then we're going to drop our bodies and, you know, maybe we'll come back in a future timeline on the planet. So each, what I'm saying is each, with each generation, the density of the human body is going to change because in order to maintain that higher rate vibration that the earth's ascension path is on, the vibration is going to continue to get higher and higher. We, our physical bodies also have to adapt. And then with that, then each generation is also going to be dismantling, nullifying, and clearing out by wave uh, belief systems, thought patterns, and foundations even more. So that is the evolutionary aspect of it. And um, what Sammy had shown me uh, from a future incarnation, so to speak, of Sammy's soul, which is a completely different being because a because you have to remember 
again, that that spiritual essence in that future timeline is different than who she is here in physical form now. But anyway, um, that future being said, this would for, for humanity to clean out the distortions. It's gonna take about 900 years. Now, that may sound like a long time, but actually with the amount of distortions that we've been uh, in this extreme polarity that we have been in and adopted, that's, that's actually not very long. And once we do that, then we'll start on an ascension path in an 18 dimensional universe. Um, and if you see some of the other things that we did, the 18th, 16th, 17th, and 18th dimensions have all, has already been activated there. Now there are more dimensions, but when I say that, I mean for the physical human to be able to access physically. And so as we get higher and higher in vibration and are able to hold that, in all the dimensional layers that the human avatar accesses, then there is a being that will evolve out of that, that could not be realized without having gone through this process. And there is an excitement in that from the perspective of let's say source consciousness, uh, there's an excitement in that because we're co-creating something that's never been created before. But anyway, that's going down, um, you know, a bit more into the future. Um, so the main point about this Christ consciousness platform is that it's balanced. It will change. It will it's will stimulate changes in all our systems and. It, it is tumultuous at times, uh, and it, it's not going to be pretty for everybody. Um, and, you know, again, I had this quote COVID-19 thing, uh, which I didn't think I would get, but, you know, that's the way to, and there's lessons, there's lessons in, in all of this. So, um, practice coming into present time, practice feeling in the heart space, uh, this tri-wave that is the balance of polarity, which enables you to discern and guides you to navigate what your next steps are. And again, neutrality doesn't mean that you're devoid of feeling or that you're dead uh, or that you do nothing. It means that balance from that balance point and from this quote, higher perspective, you can discern, more easily discern what's happening and it will guide you to what your next steps are. So, um, I think those are the main points that I wanted to make. Um, looking at my little notes here. Yeah, so it's um, on a personal level, it's also trying to balance all of us to come into um, come into balance within ourselves. I mean, that's that's one of the first things that we are to work on because as we can uh, stay in balance, aligned and in a state of neutrality within ourselves, then we can emanate that out to the rest of the world. So now there are some that are made to be activists that are out there, and there are others, you know, like all of you probably who are drawn to this kind of information, um, that we are being called in a sense to hold a level of love and compassion and to emanate that out, radiate that out, because that's what will impact other other people. There are some people, you know, that are meant to be the activists, and you know, um, you know, but we don't have to get pulled into all of that. I just say that because I know there's people out there saying, "Oh, it's every time to 
uh, get out there and speak your truth and, you know, and I'm not saying that it's wrong to speak your truth, but um, that yeah, it's time to, everybody has to start to mobilize and speak out and uh, jump on this bandwagon. But, you know, we're not all made to be, um, to be that kind of voice in the world. And some of us are meant to be uh, the ones to really hold this consciousness in place and make it possible for the earth to continue to ascend. So with that, I feel like, yeah, I wanted to keep it to about 30 to 40 minutes. And looks like I'm right at about that 40 minute mark. Um, so for the sake of time, I'm not um, taking questions. Uh, I don't have the chat room open. So I don't know if there's any um, chats there. I will um, take questions if you want to email me questions or uh, on our Facebook page. If people have asked questions in the comment section, then I will answer, uh, answer questions there if I can. And if there's a common theme of questions, then uh, I can also do an email blast to everybody. So just want to encourage everybody to continue to hang in there. And again, keep breathing, practice gratitude, and um, whatever it takes to help you to stay in balance and stay in that love and compassion vibration from the heart. So thank you very much for joining me. And I hope that you are all having, um, I don't know, moving through these times with as much grace and ease as possible. Thank you.